All right, students, welcome to Concentrations Part 2. So this is a continuation of the notes we took about molarity. We're going to talk the second part, which is all about dilution. So make sure you turn to the appropriate page in your notebook and get ready to take some good notes. Don't forget, this is a video. You can always pause. You can rewind and re-listen to a part. If you, you know, miss something, you can pause it and take notes. So, you know, you have some time to do things. So take your time and make sure you really try to understand things. If you don't, make sure you try to do anything you can to try to figure it out. There are online resources. You can ask me. Uh, you could do lots of things. So talk with each other, definitely. All right, so first we need to know what a dilution is. So a dilution is when you make a lower concentration of a substance. Um, and we'll talk about what a stock solution is in just a second, but basically you take a stock solution and you make it a lower concentration. So right here, here's a, here's a solution that has a high concentration. It's about 10 molarity or 10 molar. And if you dilute it, usually with water, you know, you can you can lower that concentration down. So that's what a dilution is. So a stock solution, just so you know, is your starting solution and it's of known and higher concentration. The stock solution is literally where you go to the stock room and you grab the solution, you know, the, the high concentrated solution that you bought from some chemistry store. And that's what you take and you can actually make lower or less concentrated solutions from that. So it's actually very cost effective. You know, you just buy a really high concentration solution and you can make a bunch of different concentrations from that one uh, and you know save a lot of money that way. So this formula you need to know and you need to know how, to, how it works. This is the dilution formula. And so in this formula, in this formula here you see we have m1 times v1 equals m2 times v2. So m1 times v1 is represents your stock solution. It's the molarity and the volume that you need to use of your stock stock solution. So right here, starting concentration of stock solution and the volume you need to use in order to make a dilution of your stock solution. And that should be equal or equivalent to your final molarity and volume when you are make your dilution. So this is the after, this is the dilution. So the final concentration, the desired concentration usually, and the volume of the final concentration that you're gonna end up with. Now I wanna point out that V2 is kind of special. It's the total volume of the final concentration. And really you need to know that it is that this V2 is equal to V1 plus whatever water you add at the end. And so that's gonna be kind of important. You might be asked questions about how much water you need to add. So let's try an example here. So here's an example. It says, how would you prepare 100 milliliters of a 0.4 molar magnesium sulfate solution from a stock solution of 2.0 molar magnesium sulfate? So a lot of things going on, but you know, I always like to say, hey, write down what the question is and write down what you have, then write down the equation and then just plug and check. It's really that easy. So the question we have here is how would you prepare? It's already kind of outlined for us, but how would you prepare this? This It's basically a dilution. How would you prepare a dilution? So here is V2. I'm going to list everything we have. So how would you prepare 100 milliliters? So that's what we want to end up with. 100 milliliters is our final volume. So this 0 0.40 molar is also our final solution. It's our final molarity. So there's V2, there's V1. Now over here, it says from a stock solution. The stock solution is usually our starting solution. So stock solution of 2.0 molar, that's our M1. So look, what are we missing? We're missing V1. So here's our formula. We're going to be looking for V1. So we're going to go ahead and pull, plug everything in. And so we're looking for V1. And so I'm going to take and do a little bit of algebra. We're going to divide two molars from this side over to this side. Um, basically do this. And we're going to solve for V1. So V1 is equal to 20 milliliters. But what, what is this? What is this actually saying? Or what are we actually doing with this? Well, this is a very important slide. So this is how you actually prepare a solution with that information. So here's kind of three steps. So first step is we're going to take... If we just solved for V1, we're going to take that 20 milliliters out of our stock solution, out of our two molar stock solution, and we're going to put it in some type of a flask or something. So we're going to put that 20 milliliters in a flask. So here it is right here. And then it says dilute it using 
distilled water until you reach V2. So we're trying to make 100 milliliter solutions. This is our final solution, what we're trying to make. And so what we need to do is take our 20 milliliters and dilute it with water. Now we're going to add about 80 milliliters of water. Now depending on the, the, the solution, you might actually have to add a little bit more, a little bit less. <clears throat> it depends on how much the water molecules interact with the solution but you know for this instance just for sake of convenience we're going to add about 80 milliliters of water and so think about that 80 plus 20 is 100 so that's that's basically what we figured out we figured out that we needed to add 80 milliliters of water from our 20 milliliter starting stock solution and we're going to end up with a dilution now that means that this dilution right here is 0.4 molar. So we've gone from a two, two molar, we've gone from two molar solution to a 0.4 molar solution by adding 80 milliliters of water. So that's, this is all a dilution is, and that's what the formula M1V1 is used for. So here's a, the final example problem. It says, what volume of a 5.75 molar formic acid solution should be used to prepare two liters of a one molar formic acid solution. So a lot of students have trouble figuring out which one's M1V1, which one's M2V2. Just remember, M1V1 is where you is the starting solution, and M2V2 is where you end. So you kind of have to read carefully. It says, what volume should you use, right? So this right here, this well, first of all, that what volume? So we're looking for V1, by the way. Um, and no, why I knew it was V1 is that is because it said should be used. So this is what we need to use of our starting solution. So 5.75 molar, it must be our M1. And that means two liters must be our V2 and one molar must be our M2. So first we are... <clears throat> going to take this and we're going to plug this into this equation here. M1V1 equals M2V2. So again, I'm just going to kind of plug everything in. I'm going to figure things out and I'm going to figure out that my V1, if you plug everything in, is 0.35L. And again, all I did to do that was I plugged in M1, 5.75. M2 is one molar. V2 is two liters. You do a little bit of algebra. You're just basically taking your M1 and dividing it on both sides to solve for V1 and you're going to get 0.35 liter. So that all that means is you're going to take 0.35 liters of your formic acid solution and you're going to add about 1.65 liters of that. And if you do that, you're going to end up with two liters, right? Because 1.65 plus 0.35 liters is going to equal two liters. And so that's kind of what we're looking for. So here's a third example. You might want to see if you can pause this video right now and solve this equation, solve this problem, and see if you can figure it out. Did you pause the video? I hope so. You should have figured out that here's what you're looking for. You're looking for M2. This, by the way, is kind of crazy. This 250 milliliters plus 35 milliliters. So this is the water. 250 milliliters of water is what you're adding to 35 milliliters of your stock solution. So this actually is V2. So V2 is 285 milliliters, which means that this 35 milliliters is V1. So this right here, this 4.2 is M1. So if we're, we're looking for M2, we're just going to plug everything into our equation. This is how you plug it in. Notice right here, I took our water and added it to the, um, the stock starting stock solution. That's our V2. Same thing over here. And then I'm going to solve for M2. So the final molarity is going to be 0.25 molar. Oh, I hope that's great for you guys. Again, rewind the video if you need to. You can go grab a textbook if you're a little confused by this. You might want to go look online for other resources if you don't know. But literally, a lot of it is just plug and chug, and you might need to understand a few things here or there relating to where the water goes and what exactly these, why you exactly need these measurements. But thanks, guys.